The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 19th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely know that each of us, sorry about that throat, should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna to toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstances of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past eight o'clock in the morning. That's right, if you listen to 11 o'clock, thanks so much for doing so. Today, we're recording the show early. We'll be back to the normal programming hour tomorrow, but I'm gonna to make today's show as pertinent as I can for you between that 11 and 12 time frame. Of course, if you are listening live, I would love to hear from you. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, Please put radio show question. And of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, and everybody should be, well, then any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. So we begin our day at 8.08 .08 in the morning with uh, U.S. equity futures trading the downside. you got the S&P, ES Mini down 16, NASDAQ's off 31, Dow's down 211, Russell's down 14. Percentage-wise, it's Russell. It's off six tenths percent. Spot fix index trading up about six percent, ninety-one cents right now at sixteen forty-nine. For the spot fix index, what you're going to want to watch at day's end is its fifty-day exponential moving average. That's at seventeen eighty-four. Our high today, seventeen eighty-eight. So it's already tested that level and it's rejected it. So that's a little bit of a bullish sign. But the day is very young. It's only eight oh eight. If we do get a close above seventeen eighty-four. I would presume we would also have a one-day rate of change above plus 10% out there. And that would then suggest that overnight you could get some type, could get some type of rally out there. But watch you simply. Watch that um, level of 1784 today. Certainly at day's end, if price closes above that, that's going to go ahead and shift. Uh, control of the markets or at least provide an edge to the sellers that are out there. We come back and take a look at how things are trading overseas overnight. You had uh, Asia trade uh, higher, closed higher. Shanghai up 23, Hang Seng up 87, DK up 193. Uh, the Asia, not the Asia, the uh, Australia S&P up 73 points out there. We're going to take a look at the international markets, get a feel for the patterns that are out there. In Europe right now, you have markets trading lower. The DAX is off 206 points, 1%, and the FTSE is down 24. Remember, the DAX and the NASDAQ are very correlated, directionally speaking, out there. So the NASDAQ, are, the DAX are going to close, well, at 1130. So that would be about 21 minutes from now if you're listening at 11 o'clock in the morning. And you want to watch, uh, see where does that close at its session lows, or where does that close at? That would give you a clue potentially as to where the nasdaq itself might uh, go ahead and uh, close we take a look at what's going on in the metals complex you've got gold up 27 bucks targeting the top of its daily profile silver doing the same up 26 pennies that's one percent and eight tenths percent respectively we know we had that first rally in uh, gold, nice big rally. That was based upon, I think, what led to most of that rally was the uh, was the uh, war in uh, uh, Gaza and Israel in the Middle East out there. And now we've got potentially war number two, a much worse uh, war, I would think, because we're talking about here nuclear type weapons. So I believe that's what the impetus is behind the rally inside of uh, gold. Uh, you've got copper trade a bit lower. Uh, natural gas is up uh, two pennies. Lights recruit is down 26 cents trading out of 68. 91. Again, though, we're looking at the January contract there. Um, U.S. dollar index up seven ticks right now, trading out at 106.28. I do have a 10-minute delay on that. 
And we're going to take a look at the currencies this morning. So let's do this here. Before we go take a look at international markets, of course, I would love to hear from you as well. But let me just start with my nine-panel market update chart, give you a good visual of what the markets are doing. So we take a look at the ES Mini. Just been trading sideways the last several days out there. Is it trading sideways to build up some cause to move lower out there? Well, we are trading below the bottom of its daily profile out there. As you can see, I've drawn in a couple different trend lines. That looks to me to be the target to the downside. I'm not saying that's going to hold the support, but it certainly is an area to be looking at today that level is about 58.25 out there and that'll change you know by the day but you can draw these trend lines in as well on your screens out there i've got the same uh, trend line here for the nq we'll go back and take the spot fix although we really just talked about it now in the case of the nq Oh, it's got to sell the deep point top. All four of the equity future contracts do. Uh, here, price did close below the bottom of its daily profile, but found support at the top of its weekly profile. And that's 2,500. If price closes below that, then we likely head down to this little short-term trend line in about the 2,150-ish type area out there. That's what's going on with the NQ. Uh, we've already discussed the uh, VIX, so no reason to go there. U.S. dollar index is consolidating with inside its daily profile. That's between 105.82 and 106.99. Now, it's a buy zone because of the bullish structured profile. And that buy zone is between the range of 101.57 and the 102. Hold a minute. That's not right. It's the 105.82 to 106.11 area. You can see gold is now approaching, just as silver is, uh, where the sellers exist, or they're supposed to exist. That's the top of its profile. And that's up at the 26.47.60. That's the number to watch today. If price closes above that, and certainly two close above that, would give us a profile change in trend. Now, we do not have a bottom pattern inside of the gold contract. It negated its TD9 count bottom. Okay, so it doesn't have a bottom pattern. But if you do close above profile resistance, that's going to be a signal that we're likely to head higher. For silver, silver's trading into its sell zone. So it's a it's a bearish structured profile. And that sell zone range where uh, sellers are at is between the level of 3108 and 3176. We're trading right now at 3146. A close above 3176, certainly too close above that, will give us a profile change in trend and suggest that we may be heading back to its highs out there. We take a look at light speed crude. It's trading in between trend line resistance that's that yellow diagonal line and a rising trend line that is the green diagonal line we are back inside its profile i would say price likely to go target that descending trend line uh, today that level would be at about 70 45 or so in the case of natural gas again this is a january contract uh, which it's rolling into price has a sell we have a sell the d point top that went in confirmed on november the 14th 15 uh, november 14th out there and now we just have a consolidation with inside profile support and resistance Resistance, that's between 3.04 and 3.23. And finally, if you take a look at 30 year Treasury, it has that Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pattern. We're trading above yesterday's high. Its price target range is likely 118.05 to 118.18 on a rally. So that's what's going on, generally speaking, out there. Let's go take a look at some of those international charts out here. We're going to switch over to Stevie's white background screens. We're going to try to switch over to it. And voila, there you go. So you got the uh, Shanghai in the upper left. Now, the Shanghai, as you can see, is trading below its uh, oscillator and change line. Suggests that, well, it tells us that it's lost its momentum. Maybe it's going to head lower. We did get a bull sash candle today. So the other thing that we can take a look at, the swing point for the Shanghai, one of the swing points would be from October 18th. And what we saw take place overnight is price tested and rejected that swing point. It did that yesterday as well. But today we've got that little bull sash candle. Now, you can see we have a series of lower highs out there. But I would say, because we've tested or it's tested and rejected that swing point, likely we're going to see a bit of a rally out here. And that is on the Shanghai. If we take a look at the Hang Seng, it has an A to B equal CD pattern to the downside out there. I don't see anything at this moment in time other than two. Oops, I'll be right, we'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. 
Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. 8.18 in the morning on uh, Tuesday. Uh, we are recording today's show early. We're taking a look at the international uh, uh, indice charts out there. Uh, we took a look at the Hang Seng. You can see that clear A to B equals CD pattern. Gets us down into the 18,000 level. The Nikkei has been trading in a sideways consolidation. It formed that nice island top reversal. That set off this consolidation pattern out here. In particular, the FTSE, it has a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Its price target is in the uh, 7900 uh, ish area out there uh, we did uh, we are trading below that red oscillator and change line we've been pretty much below it with the exception being yesterday it being 80 86 in the case of the uh, DAX out here let me just expand out this chart the DAX let me pull it back a tad as well the DAX been trading as best I can see in a oh, in a sideways consolidation we can move that consolidation level lower out here so give me a moment to do that I don't know how that shifted but there we go um, more so like this yeah so there's that consolidation pattern. You can see we're basically at the bottom of it today. Now, if price closes below this, let's say, let's just make it this. There's a bullish reversal candle referred to as the Three River Morning Star pattern. So here's support. Support is at the low of that candle formation. And it doesn't have to be three bars. It could be a four bar, five bar uh, pattern out there. But the low to be watching, observing, 18. 838.68. The price were to close below that, well, number one, that would set off A to B equals CD patterns to the downside, but price would likely target the 18382 level, or maybe it makes a measured move equal to or greater than that consolidation pattern. So the key level to be watching here is really the low from November 13th. That's the low of that Three River Morning Star pattern that is out there. Uh, so that's what's going on internationally. I'm going to go ahead and close out these charts. And from here, let's go take a look at what's going on in currencies out here, because that's going to be important. And let me open up the euro out here. I, I realize that I have this notated uh, with regard to uh, Russia out here. So I've got, if you take a look at February 20, 2014, and that's this little black uh, uh, arrow that I've got out here, that was when uh, Russia went ahead and invaded Crimea. Take a look at the euro. The euro has traded lower basically ever since that point in time. If we take a look at when uh, Russia invaded Ukraine, February 24th, 2022, then what do we see? We can see that all rallies 
uh, in the euro ran right into that resistance level. So, you know, important to note those on your uh, charts, I believe. Again, go, just go back to uh, February 24, 2022. This is a monthly chart that we're taking a look at. Now, when we take a look at this monthly time frame chart out here, we do have price that is trading below that red oscillator and change line. If we close below that at the um, at month end, so that would be what next Friday out there, that's going to suggest that the euro should target its uh, swing lows from back in September or the swing point, I should say, from September of 2022 out there. Now, that's what the monthly chart is telling us. But note on your charts out there, for those of you that trade the uh, euro or you trade the U.S. dollar, you want to certainly be taking a look at. Uh, what's going on there? If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart for the euro, no bottom signal here. Price breaking through its breakout level. It is targeting this uh, TD9 count level uh, that formed back on October 6, 2023. It closed below that low, that low being 1.0448, would definitely signal lower price. Now, it's possible that on a weekly basis, that was, this could generate another TD9 count bottom. We're not there just yet, but something to watch and observe. But right now, the weekly chart suggests lower price. The daily chart, really the same thing out here there's no bottom pattern that i see price for the most part on a daily time frame has remained below that oscillator and change line we did get about four or five days we got above that uh, level out there and that was really courtesy i think of that td9 count bottom on the daily time frame that formed on october the 20 uh completed on october the 24th out there once we got below that and when we got below that was on a trading day of november 16th that said look out we're headed for lower price now there's an a to b equals cd pattern to the downside that we can draw in here we're not near i don't believe we are near let me just go ahead and put that in here i do not believe we are near that one to one level just yet but let's just draw this in here let's go from a to b which is the bottom of that td9 count pattern let's go ahead and shift this uh, over and uh oh, stevie's wrong don't have that much further to go. So what you'd be watching for here on a daily time frame for the euro is you'd be watching for price to move a bit lower, form some type of bullish reversal candle that would then generate a buy the D point pattern. Uh, let's take a look at the other currency pairs out here. We've got the, uh, the I'm just in the euro right now. Uh, so I'm going to switch over from the euro, go back to that other chart that we were taking a look at. Give me a moment to get back there so we can take a look at the other currency pairs. Again, the pound. Here we go. So now you've got the Japanese yen. The Japanese yen on a daily time frame, by the way, represents 13%, 13.6% of the weighting inside the U.S. dollar index, formed a roadsman to mitigator top just a few days ago on November 15th. It's lost its momentum. We're trading below the green oscillator and chain sign. So its target's going to be the recent lows. That's at about the 151.34 level. In the case of the Great British Pound, let's open up this chart. Let's pull it back out here. Let's open up the curtains. And here what we can see is price right now is testing a breakout area of support. That's at the 1.2616. I don't see any kind of a bottom pattern in here. Uh, certainly the A to B equals CD pattern has not been fulfilled. If we take a look at that, let's put that up on our screen out here. Give me a moment. We'll draw in that A to B line. We'll just simply move that over to the, and that's going to be at that wave seven uh, bottom out there. That's, how, that's what Stevie will use as the B point. And then we're just simply going to drag this over to the next highest high. And you can see we're well off uh, that that's got a price projection down to the 124 type level for the great british pound so that's what that now you watch this 1.2616 level when price closes below that on a daily time frame that's what's then going to trigger uh the move to that uh, initial price objective of that a to b equals cd pattern. the case of the uh, canadian dollar nine percent weighting is testing that green oscillator and change line if it stays above it at day's end increases the odds of a rally out there uh, so that's what i've got now on the daily time frame for the U.S. dollar index. We looked at Stevie's black background charts out there, the nine panel, and uh, you can see that price is testing a key area of support as well. That's its green oscillator and change line. That green oscillator and change line printed out 10608 out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at currencies. I'm going to go ahead and close these charts down simply so that I can free up some resources out there. And then what we will do is we'll go to... Um, We'll go to an intraday chart out here, but I'm going to do one thing and apologize for this, but um, I use different data feeds when I take a look at the international, or I have to use different data feeds when I take a look at the international markets as well as um, some other commodities out there. But now I am in the process of uh, changing over. I'm just explaining to you 
while you're basically seeing a blank screen out there. Now that I've got that uh, over there, perfect. Now we can start taking a look at, uh, what did I say we're going to take a look? Let's go look at the intraday charts out here. I don't know which one is going to pop up uh, at this moment. It might be the uh, Dow equity future contract, but whatever it is that pops up, that's what, uh, well, it's the ES mini. So that's what we're going to start by taking a look at. Now, in the case of the ES mini, I believe the key level to be watching today to the downside is going to be the breakout area at a 60-minute time frame chart, the same on the 30-minute time frame chart, and that's down at the 5886 area out here. 5891 one happens to be the bottom of the five hour time frame uh, profile 5889 the bottom of the 240 minute uh, profile out there so watch 5886 if price closed below 5886 we very likely will head lower head lower to where well that's a, a great uh, question out there uh, let's continue looking at these uh, charts so uh, the easiest way for me to describe where is if you caught the opening of the show did i do that which was the trend lines. Let me do this here, I, and apologize if I have a little brain fart going on. It's a stinky one, that's for sure. We're gonna change my screen, it's gonna go over, as we look at the equity future contracts, just wanna make sure that I had shared this screen with you. And if I didn't, well, I'm doing that right now. And that is because each of you can draw these uh, trend lines in there. And that's what you should really do because I believe those are the next downside price targets for the ES, the NQ, the uh, Dow, and the uh, Russell 2000. So take a snapshot of the screen. Go ahead and draw those trend lines in on your charts as well. And just note those as a possible place where price could find support. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, it is at 8.30 in the morning, 11.30, if you're listening at the normal programming time out here. We're taking a look at the ES Mini right now. By the way, uh, all U.S. equity futures are trading lower. You got the Dow down, uh, equity futures down 245, S&P 23, NASDAQ 72, and the E-Mini Russell down 17. We're looking at the E-Mini right now. And so I'm going to call an audible. I've given you a level to be watching uh, price closes below that area. Uh, that audible says no. We want to change that to 58.76.75. Now, why do we want to do that, Stevie? Because that is the TD nine count bottom pattern uh, for the uh, four hour time frame chart. Price is trading with inside its bullish structured profile as well. So a close below 58.76.75 would trigger an A to B equal CD pattern to the downside. I gave you those trend lines to watch as well. If those trend lines fail on the daily time frame, Frame, then this would come to fruition. Now would take price back towards its breakout level at 57.47.50. So the number to watch today for the ES Mini, 58.76.75. You might be asking that same question. Well, Stevie, what's the number for the NQ? Now this is important because it's 8.30 right now, but at 11.30, you're going to want to know where is price trading there, and that's going to give you a feel as to where the ES Mini is headed. Now, maybe we just consolidate as well, and we don't break through support or resistance. In the case of the NQ, again, we're looking for that TD9 count bottom. Turns out that it's really on the five-hour time frame chart. So that TD9 count bottom, and that could be the B point of an A to B equal CD pattern to the downside out here. If price closes below that. That is, write this down in your pad of paper out there. Maybe you don't use pads of paper. Stevie does. 2405.25. If we close below that, we're certainly going to go target 2107.50. That's its breakout level, but it could get much worse than that. If we take a look at the, we draw the A to B point out here, that A to B. And, uh, and I love when you're drawing, you know, A to B points. If you can, if you find a B point or, you know, that happens to be a, uh, you know, a, a bottom or a top, depending on which way you're drawing the A to B equals CD pattern. In this case here, it's the downside. Now, what's nice about that is we got the high, which is what you have to use. But that was also a Rogeman indicator top back on 9 o'clock in the morning on the 11th out there. Now you've got this TD9 count bottom. I'm just going to move this uh, over right now. I won't do the copy, paste, and assemble thing. But you can see that would trigger close below that uh, swing level, that TD9 count bottom. Again, that number is at 2405 and a quarter. That'll get us down to uh, the 19785-ish uh, type uh, level out there. So that's the number to be watching for the ES and for the NQ uh, as we speak today. Um, let's go take a look at Goldilocks, see what's going on in the gold land out here. So we're looking at the December contract. We know that price is trading up towards the top of its uh, daily profile. If you didn't get that profile level out there, that resistance area is 264760 the high today so far 264340 so we're getting close you can also see on the daily time frame chart you can see that the oscillator and change line change colors out there now when it changes colors, we typically see price test that level. Well, we don't know if it's going to be a test and rejection. So the real resistance zone, if you will, for Goldilocks is between 2647 and 2657 right now. That's that oscillator and change line, the latter figure that I gave you. If price tests and rejects that level because it's red, you know, that's that's a bearish type message to us. But we have to do remember, why is gold trading the way that it is right now? Very likely because of what's going on, uh, because uh, because things seem to have been not seen. Things have been amped up over in Ukraine. Just absolute insanity out there. But uh, that's not here. That's not the, that's not for me to uh, decide out there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you price and what to be watching for. So if we do get a close above that oscillator and change line, 26.50, a key level of resistance, two key levels of resistance will have failed. And that would then suggest that we rally further. Now, each of you out there, you could do the retracements from high to low. You know, so you be take a look at, I, I'm guessing the asset and change line is pretty much near the 0.382 retracement. That's just a visual thing uh, for Stevie. Uh, but so you could use those retracement levels as price targets. But you'd really be looking at what else is going on on intraday charts and so forth out here. Now, speaking of the intraday charts, um, we're going to form bar number eight at 9 a.m. on the five-hour time frame chart that says at two, we get to uh, bar number nine, and maybe by the end of the day, uh, you get a TD9 count top that's completed for the five-hour time frame chart. But you don't have to really wait for that. What you're really watching now is the four-hour time frame chart. And the reason is because this morning at 6 a.m., uh, for a TD9 count top completed. So what you're watching for here in gold is that high, and that high is 26.40.60. If price closes below, above that on a four-hour time frame, that tells us that we're headed higher, headed higher to where? Well, again, you've got that daily resistance zone out there, but if price can clear that, 
if Stevie can get this chart to open up, then most likely our price target would be 27.1170. That's coming off of the four hour time frame chart out there, and that's its TD nine count breakdown level out there. So watch now, again, it's a four hour time frame chart. Is there any other intraday signal that would assist you in identifying whether gold's going to trade higher from here? And that answer is yes. In fact, we can take a look at a 10 minute time frame chart. 10 minute frame, time frame chart out here created two different tops this morning. The first one was a TD9 count top, came in at six o'clock this morning. So even though there's uh, uh, all this stuff going over in uh, Europe right now, uh, what uh, the, the patterns are working, and when I say the patterns are working, you have both a TD9 count Rhodesman indicator top on the 10 minute time frame. What does price do? Pulls back to its breakout level, 26.3340. Another great example of why you want to know the TD9 count pattern. You like to have these objective levels of support or resistance out there, and that most certainly is one of them. Then what do we get? We get a rally that takes out that TD9 count top. And what does that turn into? We talked about the Three River Morning Star. On the 10-minute uh, time frame chart, we now have a Three River Evening Star. What did price do? Pulled back and tested that breakout level once again. And that level again is 26.3340. Watch that to the downside. You close below that, we likely head lower. As well to the upside, a close above the high of the day that came in during that 8, 10 a.m. Uh, time frame. And that's at 26.43.40. So watch 26.43.40 to the upside. Watch 26.33.40 to the downside. Whichever one breaks, if either one breaks out there, that's going to point to the next direction in price out there. So that's what's going on when we take a look at uh, Goldilocks. I do not, uh, I do not uh, see... Do not see any requests out there, none by email as well. So let's go take a look at the 30 year treasury. We've got a nice rally going on there. Let's go see what's going on from an intraday standpoint. And of course, if you would like me to take a look at something, you can send me an email steve at tfnn.com. And inside the Tiger's Den, well, just about any ping will do. I, oh, I do see I've got a request. Can I evaluate the crazy situation in SMCI? So we'll definitely do that. Let me do this first ELO since I pulled up the 30 year treasury. And by the way, thank you for your request. My apologies. Apology for overlooking it. Uh, if we took a look at the daily time frame, we've got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern that formed about four days ago with that little bull sash candle. So we're trading above yesterday's high out here. Suggest to Stevie we want to go test its um, now on a daily time frame. A counter trend rally inside the 30 year would find resistance at the uh, center of its profile, the bottom or center. The bottom is at the 118.06 level. The center is at 118.18 area. So we may see the 30 year treasury rally up into that. Uh, level out there. Uh, that's what's going on on the daily time frame. Let's see what kind of intraday signals we have out here. Do we have any kind of a uh, top? Well, it turns out on the two-hour time frame chart, this bar that we're in right now is going to complete at 10 a.m., an hour and 20 minutes from now. A close above the high, the TD Nikeout top, 117.07 says we rally further. So I'd watch 117.07 as we come to that 10 o'clock time frame. If we do close above that, we are likely headed higher. So let's do this. We come back to this break. Let's go take an SMCI for ELO inside our Tiger's Den. We'll be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. 
having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So ELO inside our Tiger's Den wants to take a look at Super Micro Computer Inc. out there. SMCI is the ticker symbol. We can see that yesterday it closed above. It's So it's got a Rhodes-Mintum indicator bottom pattern that formed. And that formed out here, ELO, yesterday because of the uh, gap to the upside and the uh, stretched uh, uh, lines, if you can see, that formed that Rhodes-Mintum indicator signal. So you got a bullish uh, daily uh, signal out here. Today, right now, it's trading out at uh, 2705. And 2705, so the first thing here, ELO, to watch, is this just a counter trend move? If it is just a counter trend move, we can see that price has been below the daily bullish structured profile out there. Just like we took a look at, I believe it was with the 30 year. If it's only a counter trend move, price would find resistance between 2648 and 2906. We're trading at 27 bucks in the pre market right now. So that would really be the area to watch. If price closed above 2906, then that would say this is more than a counter trend move. And it would also suggest a rally up towards 3422 or 38 buckaroonies. On a weekly time frame, what's needed here, let me just open this up, I believe it's just simply, yeah, what's needed here is just simply a bullish reversal candle on a weekly basis. And that's not going to be how does the candle look at Tuesday. It's going to be what does the candle look like at Friday. But if you do get a bullish reversal candle here, ELO, the weekly time frame chart for Super Microcomputer will generate a buy the D point bottom out there. And finally, if we look at the monthly time frame, no bottom in uh, sight as we speak right now. Uh, price is below the bottom of its uh, profile at 32.68, closed below it last month. Uh, may close below it on Friday as well. And that would then say that Super Microcomputer would target 370. So here's how this is playing out for us, ELO. Um, if the oh, if it's only a counter trend move on the daily time frame, you'll see price start turning down between 2648 and 2906. If that in fact unfolds, then that signal is giving us uh, that. Then the message more likely is that SMCI is going to go target 370. So how about that? It basically about um, uh, one year's time was it one year's time. It was no March of 2024. So it's only I mean in just. Uh, you know, a few months time out here, we've gone from basically 120 to potentially going down to that 370 level out there. But that's what happens when you've got some fishy financial statements out there. Let's take a look at NVIDIA and let's look at NVIDIA because I believe that they are out with earnings after the bell. 
Is that correct out there? NVIDIA right now in the pre-market. Let me see what that's trading at. NVIDIA is trading out, fired off at 140.83.84 out here. So if we take a look at NVIDIA, we were talking about counter trend moves. Yesterday's move inside of NVIDIA, even though it had traded lower, was a signal that maybe the move lower was just a counter trend move. Price closed above. So first you've got a Rosemont indicator top. And then you had a profile that formed below price. When you form below price, that's a bullish message out there. But more so than that, price was above that bearish structured daily profile that formed about four or five days ago. Yesterday, what price did was it tested that area where a counter trend move would find support. And for NVIDIA, that's between 137.41 and 139.17. Now, I'm not telling you how this is going to trade tonight. Uh, um, assuming that tonight is the release of earnings out there. But what I can share with you, if we're looking for some kind of signal, that signal is, uh, and watch how today trades, but right now we're trading above yesterday's close. Uh, we're trading out of, well, just above it, uh, about 90 cents uh, maybe above that level out there. But that's the area to really be watching, 137.41. What happens today, price closes below 137.41. Says the move was not a counter trend move. And uh, the next area of support would be 133.88. Don't know whether that would hold or not. The weekly time frame chart for NVIDIA has a Rogeman indicator top. Price is below the green oscillator and change line. That's telling us that it has lost its momentum. And on a monthly time frame, price is consolidating with inside its daily profile. If price was able to close above on a monthly basis, that's next Friday, above 140.76, then you'd be in full out bullish mode for the longer term time frame, and that would be for the monthly. So watch how this trades today. But right now, as long as 137.41 holds, um, it would be a it would appear to be a signal that um, maybe price is going to not do much, trade a bit higher out there. We're not getting that signal at this moment in time that price would want to trade lower. So what do we want to take a look at next out here? Let me see what else is moving in the markets. Kind of slow on the request line out there. Debtors, if you're listening, would certainly love to hear from you. Um, what do we want to take a look at uh, next out here? What do we want to take a look at next? Um, let's take a look at some of those mining stocks. Let's take a look at Newmont Mining. NEM is the uh, ticker symbol out here. And uh, Amazon short going pre-market uh, target. Okay, so that's just a trade that you're taking. So let's take a look at uh, Newmont Mining. What do we see here with regard to Newmont Mining? And let me see where Newmont Mining is trading in the uh, pre-market. Again, it's 847 in the uh, morning. If you're listening live, thanks so much for doing that. Uh, so we take a look at Newmont Mining. It's last trade fired off at the 4335 level. So 43.35 would take us where? So there is a new profile that has formed out here. And it's fairly narrow. It goes from 40.97 to 42.44. We're trading at 40, in the pre-market 43.47. So if we close above uh, the top of its profile, 42. 44, and we do that again tomorrow, you'd have a profile change in trend, and that would suggest that we rally further. The weekly time frame chart had a rose momentum indicator top. Price found support at its breakout level, 41.31 out there. Yeah, closed just below it slightly last Friday. We use it as a guideline. We're back above it right now. Says that the move yesterday, yesterday, last week, was basically what I would refer to as a false move to the downside, a false breakdown move out there. If we look at the monthly time frame chart, uh, we have price that is consolidating with inside its monthly profile. The range there between 33.71 all the way up to the uh, 47.60 area out there. Um, who's the next largest waiting inside? I don't know, but let's go take a look at uh, Franco Nevada, FNV. This is usually a good stock also to gauge and take a look at what's going on inside of Goldilocks. So if we take a look at Franklin Nevada, it actually has a confirmed TD9 count bottom pattern out there. That TD9 count bottom pattern completed on November 13th. That's a key low out there. It requires a close below that to negate that signal, it being 113.23. Now let me see where Franco Nevada is trading in the uh, pre-market out here. 120 was the last trade. Uh, the top of its profile out here is at 118. Uh, it's also in change line is the level to be watching today. And that's at the 121.68 area. Now, that number is going to go up just a tad uh, with price here rallying this morning. Now, I don't know what's going to happen at the open. That's going to be, what, 40 minutes from now. But right now, watch the 121.68 area. If price were to close above that in Franco, Nevada, that's going to just be another signal that this wants to rally. Rally to where? Well, 120.64 is the bottom of its weekly profile. 
well. So that's another area to watch. If we close above that, then we go up towards the 123.83 level and above that 126.29. Um, nothing else that I see out here uh, in um, in the uh, uh, Franco Nevada, but those charts look pretty good. ELO is up at it again. Thank you, ELO. MSTR is a, a ticker symbol that he would like to take a look at. So let's go take a look at uh, this. Uh, wait for these charts here to populate. And uh, you've got a TD9 count top out here that formed yesterday it's going to complete today and uh, right now in the pre-market out here ELO we're trading at 389 so you're going to get a completed TD9 count top on the uh, daily time frame at session end assuming that price closed about 367.60 that would be your downside price target that's the top of its profile on a weekly time frame you're going to very likely form a TD9 count top this week would complete it next week hope you're ready Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Welcome back, folks. We were taking a look at uh, ticker symbol MSTR before we went to the break, micro strategy. So daily time frame, again, is going to complete TD9 count top today. Now, whatever that high is of the pattern, of course, the price closes above that. 
It tells you about a strong upward momentum move for the daily time frame. Weekly, again, you're going to go ahead and confirm. TD Knack out top on uh, Friday will complete that pattern uh, next uh, week. And if we take a look at the uh, monthly time frame chart, uh, there is nothing suggesting that this rally wants to stop. So it's going to be all about that daily and the weekly time frame chart out there. Hope that that helps you out. Uh, Amazon, uh, somebody went short. Amazon, let me just uh, give you at least the figures to be watching here, at least where the buyers are located. And it's an equally... Um, fairly equally uh, a, a split profile. In other words, the center is pretty close to the center. So let me tell you where you've got support. You've got support at 193.34, 194.31, uh, 198.74. In the pre-market, we're trading 199.45 out there. That is on Amazon. Let's close the show by taking a look at that uh, Dow Equity Future contract. That is trading much lower. It's taking another hit out there. Um, down about 500 points as we speak. So we took a look at that five-hour time frame chart. We suggested to you that that was the key level to be watching. Why? Because it was a TD9 count bottom pattern out here. That was at 9 o'clock this morning on the five-hour time frame chart. Uh, 9 o'clock yesterday, I apologize. On the, and that, uh, that level out there, which is 43,398. And uh, then we're going to close below that here in the next four minutes out there. What that uh, has done is... Um, just simply suggest lower price. And again, for the lower price, I go back to those rising trend lines out there inside of the down. I don't see any other bottoming signals out here intraday. So let's just, uh, to end the show, let's shift uh, our screens out here. Let's go back to the black background screen. And uh, again, thanks so much for joining me this morning, folks. really appreciate that. And what you want to be watching for are these trend lines. Go ahead, take a snapshot of these pictures out there. I'm not saying this is where price is going to, you know, buy those trend lines. But those seem to be the likely next downside targets out there. Folks, have a terrific Tuesday. I'll look forward to seeing 11 o'clock a.m. sharp on wonderful Wednesday. Take care. Be safe out there. Tommy O'Brien, he's up next.